Hello everyone and welcome on the Barcelona of Spanish Formula 1 GP debrief. Pretty cool Grand Prix, I watched it before going for the fast 12 at the Indianapolis 500 qualifying. I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. A few bullet points I wanted to talk with you guys. So the first one, Mercedes. Mercedes is back. I've been saying that for quite a while, I've been saying that actually before, was it Imola Australia? I'll tell you one thing, they are preparing really hard on the background, they upgrade and the solution, I feel like they're gonna be back in the game and they did struggle a little bit more than I thought they would, but eventually Mercedes is back with a decent car. It's not the best car yet, it's not a winning car yet, but they've sorted the, the bouncing problem, they were performing. Yes, George Russell is on the podium P3, incredible race, but for me the most impressive one was Lewis Hamilton. Contact with Magnussen at the beginning, puncture, 19th, wants to retire the car, think he's not gonna do anything good. But with the high tire degradation in Barcelona, they picked up the right strategy, they are at the pace. I think they had the fastest race time of everyone, meaning that if they were at the front, they could have won the race. And that is, that is good. That is exactly what we need. We need a Red Bull, we need a Ferrari, and we need a Mercedes to fight together for a good championship. So, Mercedes is back. They uh, know that the bouncing issue is solved. I'm pretty sure they're gonna bring up great to bring performance to the car, rather than trying to fight that, that bouncing. Brilliant strategy, did a good job again. As I said, George Russell, congrats, P3, amazing. But for me, the most impressive one was Lewis on that race. I believe he could have won it. So, you know, Monaco next week. Monaco is probably not gonna be the best Best place for Mercedes. They normally historically struggle a bit there, but with the new car, who knows? But we're on for something pretty cool there. Ferrari, they, they had the race, they won the race, they had it, and then power unit failure or power unit issue. I don't I don't know what it is, but that is normally Red Bull's problem. They lost the lead of the drivers' championship, they lost the lead of the constructor championship in one race. That is a shame. For Charles, he was doing an incredible job. He had everything under control, but mechanical failure. That happens. But as I say, you don't want that too often because you know Red Bull is there, they're sorting their problems and they're fast. So yeah, for Ferrari that that was a a bad weekend on the corner of science yeah in the gravel early in the race that's not ideal uh, it's been quite quite a few now in a row good recovery after that finishing fourth but i really i don't think that's um, that for the team if they want to be world champion they have to you know they have to be more consistent and, and and be more at the front and giving trouble just the way george russell does right he doesn't have the fastest car but he's always there doesn't make any mistakes and actually was leading the race for a while so um that was pretty exciting Red Bull, well, there's a clear number one and number two. I mean, that's as clear as, as it gets. Perez was doing an incredible race. Uh, Max chased Charles, made a mistake, went in the gravel, came back behind Sergio. They asked the first time Sergio to move over to let Max go to Max defense. The DRS not working is a big issue. And, and again, it shows that with the DRS, I feel like the overtaking is too easy, too straightforward, but without the DRS, it's almost impossible. So there is, there is something to be found there. The 2022 Formula One, racing is so much better than it was very very good job to formula one and everyone that was involved in that but i feel like that the racing that the overtaking part could be improved in a way or another right as i said the drs most of the, the time you saw a drs move the guy was well ahead of the braking zone which is a bit of a shame when it doesn't work like it was the case on max just just you can't pass but well, come back at rebel so clear number one clear number two so if checo is asked the first time to let max buy okay fair enough and then Checo is a different strategy, yes. But he's leading the race, and Max is second at that point. And yes, Max is faster and, and catching him. But let them race. Why would you, when Max is about four or five seconds behind, already give a team order to Checo to let him buy, basically? You can't word it that way, but that's what it means. When you get the message, your teammate is on different strategies, faster than you, please don't hold him. That means clearly let him buy. But why? There were no reason. I mean, Checo was didn't didn't go in the gravel, didn't make a mistake, run a good race. Yes, at that time he's slower because on all the tires, but let him race. Yeah, that was a bit of a sour feeling to to the race yesterday in that aspect. It is what it is at Red Bull, where you are next to uh, to the leader. You just uh, you're just number two, and, and you know that's the way it worked for uh, many years, I guess. Um, but yeah, I wish uh, I wish we'd seen a bit of a fight for for the win there. Want to talk about French? 
and French driver and French team Alpine struggling in qualifying. I don't think they can generate quite the temperature in the tires that they want for a quality lap, which may be an issue in Monaco. But on the other side, in the race, they could pass pretty much everyone. Yeah, flying, Alonso starting 20th, finishing 9th, Ocon starting 12th and finishing 7th. They passed, they didn't have too much degradation, they were good on the tires. So that's the right balance that you want to find between qualifying and race. Qualifying, yes, you want to generate the temperature into the tire quickly, so you get the maximum of the grip. But if you do so, that means in the race, most of the time, you're going to generate too much temperature too quickly, meaning you're going to overrate your tire and struggle a lot. So Alpine was very good in race, that was good to see, always good to see a French team doing great. Uh, yeah, Yes, I'm French and Swiss. Yes, I was happy to see that. I was happy for Esteban Ocon, Fernando Alonso, 40 plus years old and still going like he was 20. I love that. Uh, it's so good to see and exciting. And last, I think it's the opposite, Haas. Very good in qualifying, eight and 10. I think Kev was a bit too optimistic on that turn four turning in. You know, the guy on the inside, normally he's gonna open the corner. That's the way it is in turn four. Uh, and Kev just on better tire. Turning probably maybe had more grip than Ford, collided with Lewis and that was race over. And on mix side, good qualifying fine good to be in the top 10 definitively but the race pace wasn't there they just fall backward and soft initially then they put another set of soft which soft which was quite interesting they, they kind of came back in the top 10 but then they went for a two stop while everyone was on the three stops and and they just lasted far too long on those medium tires at the end and, and not scoring points again so uh, i'm quite impressed that they were able to be in the top 10 in qualifying with no upgrade on the car it's good that they're fast in qualifying for monaco definitely because that's a place where you cannot overtake especially with the big new wider car i think it's gonna be you know it's gonna be following each other and the race is gonna happen on saturday in qualifying they have to be careful not to fall back too much because you know alfa romeo has been up there doing a good job williams was struggling this weekend but yes has us to bring uh, us to bring upgrade as to find more pace in the race and, and make sure that they get the right strategy so i think they struggle in that aspect and then obviously the talking point of the weekend was the green red bull Kind of the copy from Aston Martin. I guess that's what you do in Formula One. You look at what the others are doing and you just try to put, you know, these on the same stuff for your own wind tunnel and see if it works. I don't see a problem personally. That's what everyone has always been doing, trying to find the ideas on, on the neighbors and, and copy them. Obviously that one was quite extreme. Same way as they did it with the Mercedes back in 2020, was it? Was it was the pink Mercedes? But yeah, why not? Why not copying something that works if you can copy it? You know, just as long as you design it yourself, that's I think I believe that's what the rule says, as long as you design it yourself you're fine but you can always see what the neighbors are doing and and get the inspiration from it so you know obviously they still need to get on top of that bringing such a big upgrade a race is not easy because you need to make sure that it, it correlates well it works well on track and then find a way to set it up it's a big change for them but in the race it worked pretty well so let's see uh, they've been one of the team that's been a bit, bit of on the back foot this year so let's see if they they can make it work and definitely uh monaco is going to be a good test because we know normally the red bull is very fast in Monaco so I'm excited it's straight here this weekend Monaco uh, it's happening um, they changed the schedule it's not anymore Thursday Saturday Sunday it's gonna be Friday Saturday Sunday and I'm excited to see what it's like as always please make sure that you subscribe like comment I like to have your reaction on the videos and I'll see you very soon